All right, so we are recording now. Um, so when we think about 4-H, uh, 4-H, I heard a, a little one um, in the screen earlier before we started, um, asked what does 4-H mean? What does that even mean? Um, so we have the 4-H pledge. I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. So we really encompass those four elements um, of heart, head, hands, and health into really creating a, a dynamic situation um, for kids to learn and to thrive and to grow. Um, so that is really what we are constantly working on is all of those different aspects um, of what the four H's are. Uh, 4-H is the nation's largest youth development organization. So you think about things like Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. We are the largest organization across the country. We specialize in allowing youth to investigate areas of interest to them. And we have with 35 plus project areas, there's truly something for everybody. So just here in our call, we heard uh, individuals interested in horses, and in meat goats, and then in rocketry, and in geology and entomology, foods and nutrition. Um, I mean, across the board, we heard so many different project areas. So really whatever drives your child um, and whatever they really have a passion for, we can find an avenue for that to fit into 4-H. Through our 4-H programming, uh, youth develop mentor learning relationships with our carefully selected volunteers and also build relationships with our older 4-H members. That is something that we really share strongly is that we want our older 4-Hers to mentor and guide the younger ones. Um, and so not only do we have adult volunteers, but we also have our youth uh, as well. Studies do show, and, and a great reason to have your kids involved in 4-H, is that youth who participate in 4-H are more civically engaged. They're going to serve as adults. They understand the bigger picture of the community that they live in. So they maybe are going to be more likely to serve um, on a local board, maybe a school board or um, you know, a community action team. They're going to have a more rounded set of skills. They're going to be um, you know, as I came from, this is my like a year and a half on the job as the 4-H agent. And, but prior to that, I taught in a local school district for 17 years. And I could always tell you the kids that were involved in 4-H on day one of being in my classroom. Uh, they just carry themselves and can articulate themselves in a much better way than some of their peers. Um, and a lot of that comes from the activities that they are involved in in 4-H. So being able to learn those sets of skills. So yes, while I'm learning uh, about how to raise a quality meat goat or dairy goat, I'm also learning how to have a, a, a conversation with an adult. I'm also learning how to budget my money. I'm also learning how to set a goal and achieve it. Um, so all of those things help kids as they progress down um, life's path. Uh, so that's really, you know, one of the biggest things that we are able to do in our programming, which is really, really awesome. Um, so you may be asking, <laughs> we've joined 4-H, <laughs> now what do we do? So 4-H enrollment opens on October 1 of each calendar year. Um, you sign up on a platform or a website called 4-H Online, and that is our 4-H database. So that's where you input your data about where you live and how old your child is, um, you enroll for the club that you want to be a part of and then the projects that your child wants to explore. So I will show you in just a little while where you can access that website um, and where you can input that information. Through your 4-H club, you have experiences and activities. So you have your monthly club meeting, but then throughout your club, you should also have project meetings where Leaders um, in your club are offering maybe a foods meeting or an arts and crafts meeting or a meeting where they say, hey, we're going to learn about how to properly um, fit your, your bucket calf for, for fair or to grow good hair or whatever the goal may be. And so there's learning experiences along the way as well. We have those at the club level and we are building, one of the goals that I have this year is to build that at the county level 
and to um, continue to, to have those experiences across the board. Not every club has a project leader in every project area. So being able to have those available countywide is gonna be pretty critical um, as, our, as our program continues to grow. Uh, and then, you know, the best thing to do is to set goals. What do you want to accomplish this year? And a lot of times the goals are, um, you know, I want to get a purple ribbon at the county fair on my foods project. And while that's the, the overarching like end goal, the goal might be, I wanna learn how to properly bake cookies to get the right texture. I want to learn how to measure um, liquids versus um, non-liquid items in the kitchen. I want to learn how to properly use a kitchen or, you know, a, a, a knife um, or a pairing item, uh, you know, whatever it may be, the goals are small along the way with the culmination of if I practice these things all year long, then when I get to make my county fair entry, you know, I'm going to have the best one that I possibly can. So it's a, it's a learning pathway. And so that's something that we're really trying um, to, to encourage is, you know, you start your project and you make your goals, but you have little goals along the way. Um, I'm gonna check, does anybody have any questions up to this point? I've rolled through quite a bit. I'm gonna check the chat real quick. Don't see any new questions. So any questions, I'm gonna stop for just a minute. I've thrown a lot of information at you in a very short time. Um, so holler at me or, or shout out a question if you have any right now. How will we know if our local program, our specific clubs have a pro program for each specific um, interest item? Like how, is there a list? that they should have or I mean like I know that we've had seen that they've done a couple of things already we weren't prepared really to engage in those things just yet but I mean how do we know what we're going to need to go outside the club for and what's going to be within our own club does that make sense yeah no that makes perfect sense and I would tell you um and and Carrie's on the call I would I would say ask your club leaders you know, just have that conversation with them and say, hey, you know, my kiddos are interested in projects X, Y, and Z. Will there be, you know, do we have club leaders in that project area? And, and if we do, you know, can, can I have their contact information or how do I get a hold of them? And then have that conversation with your club level project leader first. If you run into dead ends, um, because like I said, not every club has, I will say Purple Heart is one of our um, better clubs in having lots of different um, strengths in their volunteers and a lot of different knowledge within their volunteer base. Um, so, but maybe they don't necessarily have the one specific item, then that's when you can call me or email me um, at the office. And I will be glad to get you in connection with somebody in the county that also has that knowledge base or I can get you in touch with resources from around the state or even things that we have in our office. So I would encourage you to start at the local first. So start with your local club, um, maybe at the club, next club meeting, ask that question um, of one of the leaders. So, you know, just say, hey, we're interested in rocketry. What, what do we have to offer? Where do we start? Um, who, do, who can I talk to in the club? that also does rocketry. And then once you get through that process, you know, if you run into a dead end, holler at me, or you can holler at me and I can get you in a connection, um, but definitely reach out to the volunteers within our organization um, to, to get that answer. Okay, Great thank question. you. All right, any other questions? That was a really good one. All right, not seeing any. I'm just gonna run through um, kind of an annual 4-H timeline, um, some of the bigger things that come along throughout the year. So like I said earlier, October is when enrollment opens. 4-H um, enrollment is open all year long. 
Uh, but in order to compete at the county fair, which is what a lot of people think of when they think of 4-H is, you know, getting to participate in the fair, um, you have to be enrolled by May 1st. So you have to have your project selected, all your forms completed, um, and everything, you know, to get to that point, you have to have animals tagged um, by that May 1 date. So that's a really critical date here locally. Some counties, their date is different, um, but ours here for Butler County is May 1 uh, to compete in the county fair. But you can enroll in 4-H all year long. Um, so if you enrolled in October, then in November, it's a great time to sit down and, and think about your goals. So you selected these three project areas. What do you really want to accomplish, you know? And yes, while you're, like I said earlier, your pinnacle may be, I really wanna be grand champion in whatever the project is, but what steps do you need to take to get there? What do you need to practice? What do you need to learn? What do you need to explore before you can actually meet that end goal? Uh, December, we have plenty of community service activities. So there's an opportunity um, to be involved with, with your club and even at the county level with, um, with setting your goal or with your community service. So that's a great, great thing um, that we provide here in, in our county. January is a great time to prepare for 4-H Day. So 4-H Day is one of our competitions that we have where you, the youth um, do a lot of demonstrations or project talks. This is where they can showcase um, their ability to sing or dance or play an instrument um, in front of a panel of judges and receive feedback on that presentation. So we just had 4-H day um, at the beginning of February. It's crazy to think it's almost been an entire month since we did that, it seems like just yesterday. Um, but we had a great turnout um, with an in-person event. It was one of our first in-person events since um, County Fair. So that was really exciting to get to see the kids and um, they did a tremendous job in their presentations. So uh, that's one of my favorite 4-H events is 4-H Day. Um, so 4-H Day, obviously in February um, and, and then learning experiences such as these Zoom meetings or YQCA livestock classes or um, junior livestock producer events that happen through K-State. So lots of different learning experiences. And there was a question in the chat box that I saw earlier that asked, how do we know where these learning experiences are and things? When you enroll in 4-H online, you are able to get um, our monthly newsletter. Um, so every month the first week of the month, I send out a newsletter that just kind of highlights all of the different things going on, different experiences that we have to offer, um, where you sign up, how you participate. So just like sharing of, of this particular Zoom call, um, we share those learning experiences through the newsletter. We also have a Facebook page. Um, it is called Butler County Members and Leaders. It is a private Facebook page, so you do have to ask to be a part of it. Um, we do have the Butler County 4-H page, which is kind of our community gathering um, promotion page, if you will, but the Members and Leaders page is our private page where we share um, internal information that just members and leaders um, obviously need to know. So those, those are two great places. And then our third would be our website. Um, so butler.case-state-edu is our website. Um, and the information is also on there to, to learn a little bit more about what we have to offer. So those are some places to start and um, to gather that information. But I am always a resource. Don't ever hesitate to email me or call me. Um, I'm happy to help. Um, March, spring break is a great time for a learning field trip. Work on your project records. Um, kind of update those. You Hopefully, you know, we, we're five, six months into the 4-H year. So hopefully we've got some things that we can document that we've been a part of or that we've done um, for our record books. Um, but also a great time to go to the local um, art gallery or go to, um, you know, take a, and obviously with COVID things are a little different, but um, go visit a local producer that is raising sheep and you want to, you know, know more about that or maybe purchase your project animals. So it's a great time to, to do those field trips around spring break time. By April, you, if you are a livestock project person, you should have all your livestock selected and tagged by the appropriate date. That's really important if you're going to compete 
uh, at the county fair with your livestock. Um, May, enrollment's due. And then we have signups for things like 4-H camp and ambassador day camp, and then other workshops and meetings that we start hosting um, throughout the um, summer events. So, you know, 4-H camp, we will know, I'm gonna to venture to guess that the word will get out after they have a big powwow meeting for 4-H camp and whether or not it will happen next Tuesday. Um, we don't know what it will look like yet, but we're hopeful to be able to go back to Rock Springs this year. But if you have a younger 4-H'er, um, if we're able to have camp, there's something called Rookie Camp, and it's at Rock Springs. It's a one-night, two-day event to kind of get their feet wet, and it's just a really fun experience for the kids. So I highly encourage 4-H camp. Um, it, it, it's, it's a really, really uh, awesome event for kids to be a part of. Ambassador Day Camp is here locally. Our ambassadors, um, who are, are promoters of 4-H, host a event where the kids come in, you kind of drop your kids off, and they get to do different activities and events with our ambassadors throughout that afternoon. So a great outreach program for people in our community uh, to learn a little bit more about what we might have to offer for 4-H, and the kids have a great time while they're there. Um, June will be fair entries are due. So that's a really important date and time to know. You'll get a letter in the mail. Um, as a registered 4-H member, you'll get a letter that tells you all the information, where to go, what the deadlines are, um, you know, what projects need to be signed up with a pre-entry, which ones you enter the day of. Um, so all of that information, what the rules are for the project, all that information, um, will we'll be available there. And then um, June's always a great time if you are going to go to um, the local ceramics store and work on a ceramics piece, make sure that you're getting your appointments done and you're getting in there so that you're not rushing right there at the very end, right before county fair to get those things. Start printing um, photography entries and getting those on the mounted boards and and all the things that go um, in with that. And we've got tutorials and, and helps for all of those things. Um, but just, you know, that's kind of a busy month to really um, start finalizing some of those things. Then July, obviously, is all things fair. <laughs> um, the schedule has changed this year. Fair will be a Thursday through a Monday. So typically in Butler County for the last bazillion years, uh, fair has always been Saturday through Wednesday. This year, um, we have changed the schedule a bit. Fair Board um, and myself, we've kind of partnered on looking at revamping the schedule. Um, and so I really love the new schedule that's coming out um, or that is out. So it is on our website if you want to see um, what that schedule looks like. But it will be different for families that are kind of historically been a part of 4-H because they're used to a Saturday through a Wednesday and this is a Thursday through a Monday. Um, but I really like the changes and the new events that have been added uh, to that schedule as well. August is State Fair entries um, and put your po uh, polishing touches on your project records. State Fair entries, um, you have to be nine years old to take an entry to the State Fair. And you also have to have received a purple in, in, in most of the projects, you have to receive a purple to take your project on to the State Fair. But more information about that as we get closer, I, I, I wanna make sure I've got time for questions. Uh, September is State Fair and project record books are due. Um, and then, you know, it's a great time to start thinking about enrollment for the next year. And then October, we start all over again. So um, lots of things happen between there and a lot of things, um, you know, a lot of experiences for your kiddos to have. And for some reason, my screen is not advancing. There we go. Um, you know, and I want to just reiterate that 4-H is more than a fair entry. While the county fair is our culminating showcase event of the year, and that is, I, I'll be honest, what my two girls look forward to. They absolutely love it. They set forth those goals at the beginning of the year, like this is what they want to accomplish. Um, but there are so many things that happen all year long. Um, you know, if 4-H projects are the two weeks before county fair cram session, <laughs> we can help you with that. We can help you spread that learning out all year long so that it is more of a, a continuation and a um, kind of a path, if you will, for that learning instead of, hey, 
we got to cram a 4-H project together for the next two weeks because fair is coming up. So we can work on uh, making sure that that happens. And, and there are some great resources here um, to guide that learning. Obviously, there's the kansas4h.org website. If you haven't bookmarked that play, page yet, I highly encourage you to do show it. And I'm going to show you why here in just a second. Um, our office has resource books that can be rented out for two weeks at a time for every project area. So that's also another place to start. Um, obviously, we have all of our great mentors and our, and our adults and our youth. Um, we're doing these talking about Zoom series. We have seven of them that are in the works um, and we're hopeful to get those off. The foods one is in two weeks. So if, you're, if your child is interested in the foods project, make sure that you log in for that. Um, on Monday night, February or March 15th. And then obviously um, I'm always available. And I, I want you guys to definitely know that, that I am always here to, to answer questions. I'm gonna click over here to kansas4h.org and while it is shifting, and I'm probably gonna have to stop share and reshare my screen. If you have questions, please go ahead and, and shout them out um, so that I can answer those while we're shifting gears here. Mackenzie, you might uh, pass on to everyone that the Rock Springs Ranch is getting a major facelift right now. So if they're yes. out there. Yes, really, really it nice. is. Yeah, and, it, and they have added, um, they're in the process of adding a ropes course and redoing a lot of the cabins. Um, so yeah, you're right, Jake. There is a lot going on at Rock Springs right now. They're, they're doing a lot of a great investing for our youth, for sure. Um, can you guys see the 4-H Youth Development page? Did it shift over when I clicked on it or no? Nope, okay, so let me stop share and then I'm gonna reshare because it looks like it. Okay, can you guys see the um, 4-H website now? Is it good? Yes. Perfect, yay! So if you have never been to this website, I cannot stress enough the value of this page um, for your child's 4-H learning. So if you go to kansas4h.org, um, you will find all sorts of information um, regarding just about anything 4-H related. But the page that I like to direct new families to, because there are a lot of questions about what can I do to help my child with their project? Um, and, and obviously it's probably going to make me re-click and re-share. But if you go here to the projects tab, you can scroll down and if you just click on all projects and we're gonna see if this will be happy and go all together. Did it shift screens or no? Yay, okay, it looks like it did. So if you click on that, you will see every single project that is, um, in Butler or is in 4-H in the state of Kansas, you will see all of these down here. So I am going to click on foods and nutrition because that's a really popular one. And hopefully it continued to screen share here. Um, but there are some new resources that are coming out. So we have these spark pages right here. So if you click on this, it's gonna take you, okay, so this is a thing with 4-H. It's gonna take you to the bookstore and it's gonna look like it's gonna cost you money. It doesn't. Go right over here, click on it, and you're gonna be just fine. That is for us as agents, I think it's really confusing to families. <laughs> like you don't need to pay $1.15, but that's if you want like the glossy, pretty, shiny copy of this, then you can pay the $1.15. But if you just wanna see it and use it as a resource, here it is. And you can print it and it's all fine. Um, but these are great resources uh, to just kind of share with you what, what are we learning in the Foods and Nutrition Project. So as a beginner in the Foods and Nutrition Project, these are the things I want to practice. So these are some of the goals I'm going to set. This is what I'm going to do if I'm maybe 10, 11, 12, and maybe I've had a couple of years in 4-H and I want to learn a little bit more. And this is if I'm a senior, like if I'm a more advanced baker, then I'm going to I'm going to experiment with some of these more advanced techniques. So it kind of helps with that learning pathway we talked about earlier. And then we even have like career connections. So how can I practice some of these skills of the four H's um, through what I'm doing with my foods project? We also then have curriculum and resources um, and some different ideas that you can use as well. 
these are there for almost every project. They're not completely finished yet, but we are, this is a committee I've been working on for the last year and we're getting really, really close. Um, I will also share with you another great resource. And that is this Clover Classroom. Did it shift over to the Clover Classroom? Can you see that? Did it, did it go? Okay. And in the Clover Classroom, there are challenges. So once you feel like you kind of have your, um, your feet wet and you kind of know what's going on, um, then here are some challenges. So here's the food and nutrition challenge. And so it's a quick bread versus a yeast bread. And so they're kind of experiments or things that you can do. Um, junk drawer robotics. So for those of you that were interested in robotics, here's a great activity that you could do with your kiddos or in a club meeting um, that, that would be really, really fun. This is a new one that just came out. I think they just published this on Friday and there's a lot of great re, um, responses to the wildlife tracking wildlife uh, challenge. So some different things, you know, like I said, something for everyone. Um, there is a group of us that are gonna be meeting on Wednesday of this week and we hope to have every single project out here and ready to go by spring break. So keep an eye on this Kansas Clover Classroom website because there's a lot of great stuff happening out there. All right, so that is kind of where I wanted to stop tonight. Gives you guys at least a little bit of a taste. Um, it's kind of like drinking from a fire hose right now, <laughs> but um, what questions have I not answered that you as a new family really want to know? So this is your opportunity, either type them in the chat or just un unmute yourself and just ask me questions because I am an open book for you guys. Mackenzie? Yeah. When, you, when we have people in our club, like yesterday, we had a, a member um, asking about entomology. And I suggested that she reach out to you to reach out to Deb Johnson because we don't have anybody in our club that really does that. Is that yep. what you want us to do? Or would you rather we contact you and say, hey, this person's interested and... No, Carrie, I think you did exactly perfect. Um, send them to me and then I can get them connected to uh, the resources, whether it's an, another volunteer or the resources we have in the office or things through the state. So no, I think you did perfect. Um, if you uh, you don't have somebody directly in your club that, that can help with that particular project area, definitely send them my way, not a problem at all. Other questions you might have. This is kind of a broad question, but can you kind of explain what like a project is? Like, is it like, I understand like for woodworking, it would be that you're going to build something. Do you need to also create like, you know, your, your plans? Do you need to have like a scientific method? What, like, what does it entail to do a yeah. project? So if you're talking, so, so we're gonna, I'm gonna talk on this on two levels. Um, for, for level number one, it's the learning, the learning experience. So throughout the entire year, learning how to, and, and woodworking is not my area of expertise. So I may say things that some of you guys that know woodworking are going to laugh at. So just go with me. <laughs> but, um, you know, how to, to go ahead and, and make a square corner with, you know, maybe I'm building an end table. Um, how do I make sure that I measure twice and cut once. What, what type of tool do I use? Do I, what kind of saw do I use to cut the lumber? How do I treat it for water stains? So, so there's the learning process. You know, um, my child wants to make a cutting board uh, to use in the kitchen. What are the steps that they need to do to make a cutting board? The second part of maybe more of what you're asking, Amanda, is what does it take to exhibit at the county fair? And once, so I will tell you, you um, right now we are getting ready tomorrow night, we will submit the 4-H division rules for the county fair to our extension board, 
who will hope, I mean, there should be no reason why they don't approve them, but those should be approved. And then we will publish those as soon as possible. So hopefully by the end of this week, we will have 4-H division rules out there for um, our 4-H families to see, okay, my child wants to do a woodworking project. What do I need to do um, to help them accomplish that goal? So within that, yes, it will say, okay, these are the accepted projects types. This is what you have to turn in for the judge, for the critique. Um, you know, wh what are things for me to, you know, for us to consider while we're, we're working on this. And so that's, that's where you'll see the specifics as to the exhibition of the showcase experience. So the project learning model is learning all the different key steps to get to that point, but then the 4-H division rules and the fair book is what will um, tell you specifically what has to be completed and turned in to exhibit it at the fair. Does that make sense? Yeah, so like when I was a kid, um, I, I made a, a rocket for um, mm -hmm. for the fair. So I had to, you know, include like the instruct, you know, the, the instructions and, and the things that, and then the data as to how high it went and, you know, things like that yep. um, in order for that. So that's kind of what they're talking about when they talk about like project, and there's a word that's used, it's like project books or project something. That's what they're talking about is just that data just together in, you know, s compiled so that it, it's all there and it may not be what is needed for the fair, but it's just what they learned and what they wrote down about the experience that they took, that they did. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And so I'm going to flip over here really quick because you brought up a great, so, so, you know, you, where do you record all of those things that your, that your child learned throughout the 4-H year? Um, and that is your project record. Now we are going through a bit of a, of a shift in that right now. Um, but if we go, uh, let's see if I can find it very quickly here. It always seems that it hides from me. Um, it's under family resources. I don't know if you can see my screen or not. Um, yes. Okay, awesome. Awards and records, 4-H library, sorry. Okay, so under 4-H library, on that Kansas 4-H page, um, you will find a record keeping tab. And we will connect these uh, to our website as well, but there's some new resources that have just come out recently. But this, so we used to have something called a KAP, um, a, Kansas, a Kansas Award Portfolio. The last year for the KAP was last year. Now we have moved to project record pages. And so these project record report forms look kind of like this. Um, they're different and they're new, but there's a whole database here on this page where you can find. So um, you have a younger kiddo, you have a seven-year-old, um, and you are doing, um, let's just say woodworking or rocketry. So you would click on this um, form and then all of that information is here. Now locally to receive your 4-H pin um, and to receive awards, you fill out these KAPs and your permanent record um, and all of that paperwork. And that that's like even a Zoom for another night because <laughs> um, that, that can get kind of um, taxing. But um, like I said, you have great, um, I know Carrie is, is very well versed in, in the record keeping aspect. Now this is new to all of us with the report form, but she's great at that. Um, but this is where you would record the goals that you guys had for the year for, for his project. Um, you, and then there's an area down here for what did you do? Where did you go? Who did you talk to? What'd you try? Um, and so this is where you record all of your um, 4-H learning experiences. These are turned in in September of the 4-H year um, to our office. And then we have those judged and they can earn their, their annual pin and, and awards through having completed their records and, and turning those in. So, so there's a, um, separate, a separate thing besides the fair Mm -hmm. that those things can do so of course he's not old enough to do you know 
a lot of things. He's seven, so you know, yeah. so he wouldn't go to the you know the state fair or, or whatever. But he could still get like you know the turn in those record sheets <laughs> and project sheets and get uh, a pin or something. You said. Yep. Uh, so there's. Um, and watch for an email. You're, you guys are actually, the pen application um, has just been redesigned. It's really not new. It's just redesigned. Um, and I've, that's ready to roll out. So actually watch either tomorrow or Wednesday, depending on how my schedule rolls, I will be sending out a, a, a specific email just about the project report form we just looked at and our local pen application and how a child goes about earning those pins um, for the for their 4-H year. So for, for a first year member, it's called their membership pin. And there's like four things they have to do in, in their 4-H year. And they're, they're pretty simple things that are, you know, if you're being a part of 4-H and you're going to your club meetings and you're doing those things, you're gonna accomplish those. You probably have already accomplished those. Um, so, I, I will share a very specific email with the entire 4-H family um, in the, one day this week with that information. So great questions, but watch for that email and then ask clarifying questions from there because because that uh, hopefully that will definitely help. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Other questions, and Bailey, I see your question here. Um, and, and I see Linda's question above it. As new members of 4-H, where can we fan, find out all the key activities and times um, besides just the monthly meetings? So Linda, definitely um, in my emails that come out. So we have the monthly newsletter. That's definitely kind of point place number one where uh, all that information is definitely shared. Then I would encourage you if you are a Facebooker to get on our members and leaders page. So you can request um, to be a part of that Facebook page and, and we share those activities and events there. Um, and then on our 4-H website. So part of our k-state, um, butler.kstate.edu website, you will also find that data there. So kind of three main places to find that. But great question, I hope that answered that. And if I didn't, I'm gonna answer Bailey's question really quick and then let me know if your question still has further clarification. Bailey, you can uh, log on to 4-H online. So where you did the enrollment um, and let me just, I think I'm gonna have to open, hang on just a quick second. And I am logged in. So let me log out really quick. Okay, so Bailey, this is where you will go, or for all of you, this is where you will go. So for a, uh, v dot, v2.4honline.com, you know, and, and this is on our website uh, to get that direct link to copy and paste, but you will input your username and password that you created when you enrolled, and then that will take you to your um, child's profile page for the last number of months, you guys haven't been able to go in and make any corrections or changes to that, but that actually has changed in the last week. Andrea sent an email last week um, letting you guys know that you guys can now go in and change projects. Um, there was a, we transferred over um, software systems, or I should say not just us, but the entire state of Kansas switched over to this new um, version of 4-H online and it had a number of bugs. <laughs> and so it's been a little challenging um, from the administrative side, trying to get through some of that this year, but I feel like they're starting to get them kind of worked, uh, worked out a little bit. And so I feel like um, it's a little bit more user friendly. So you can go in, um, so log in here at this website and then put in your username and password and then you'll find your child's profile and from there you can click on projects and it will show you um, what projects they are enrolled in so very great um next question from terry will there be a state um rock trip or a geology trip for 2021 
If so, when is it planned? Um, additionally, is there a Lily Lake geology project leader? So really good questions. I have not heard um, whether or not the geology field trip will happen, but I'm gonna go back to that um, 4-H youth development page. Nope, oh, that's our website. I don't know if you can see where I'm at, but hopefully it's going with me. Um, so if we are on this page, can you see the projects pages? Is it is it working or awesome? Okay, it looks like it's going. Um, so I would click here on geology. And if you scroll down, there is, um, there was an event here looking like geology field trip, maybe the 11th, 12th and 13th of June, but they have not shared anything past that. So there is, um, so this is where you could find that information. Um, and a lot of geology, this is a great website to, to look at. Uh, we have that spark page here, but it also kind of really helps you understand here in these project materials, how to, um, gather the correct rocks because there are very specific specifications on how that has to be done, um, when it can be done, how to display them and, and all of that. So this is a great place to find a lot of that information. Great question. And Lily Lake, right now we have one individual in our county that is kind of geared towards geology. Um, they are not a part of Lily Lake, but I can definitely get you in uh, connection with them. What else? What you were saying earlier about um, projects and like what's required at the fair to present, is that going to be the same for animals? Will the book have in there what needs to be presented or like how the animal show will work? Yeah, so um, you guys were interested in horses mostly. So there is a 4-H horse ID form that you will need to complete. And so if you will shoot me an email, I can send you the copy of that link. Or if you go to the Kansas 4-H.org website, go to the horse project, the ID form is on the right hand side um, in the margin on that page. Right. Yeah, and, I have the ID form. Oh, perfect. Okay, so that has to be into the office by May 1 in okay. order to compete at county. She's not, She's remind me, is she seven? She's nine. She turns she's nine, nine January, or no, she's 10. She turns yeah. 10 January 17th. <laughs> okay, so she will be eligible to go do the district horse show and qualify for state if she, if she does. So she'll need to do a couple of other levels testing for the horse project. Um, yeah. if she wants to go past county level. So right. if she wants to do that, um, send me an email and I can get you all those specifics mm -hmm. uh, on how to get that done. And I think you and I visited before about that. Yeah. But um, but if you've got further questions, just holler and let me know for sure. Okay, I do we can have get one that. more um, about her age. Does it, yes. is it age based off of January 1 or when does age, so she would be in the nine year old group? Or yes. Would she be in nope. She would. So if she was nine on January 1st, she is nine for the 4-H year. Okay. Um, so if her birthday was December 31st and she turned 10 on December 31st, she would be in the 10 to 13 age division. But because she was nine on January 1, she's, she's, a, she's considered a nine-year-old. Okay. So um, my, my oldest turned 13 on January 3rd. <laughs> and so she loves the fact that um, she has a post January one birthday because she will be almost 20 before she ages out of 4-H. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, definitely. That's how we calculate 4-H age is your age as of January 1st. So okay. great question. Other questions. I think I answered all of them in the chat, I hope. I 
think it looks good. Amanda, are, do you feel more confident with things now? Uh, yes, I think so. <laughs> I'm sorry I kind of took over. No, you're good. That, that, I think no question's a bad question because there are probably others on the call that had the exact same questions. So you're fine. Um, well, I will, I will end with just a few really important dates that are coming up. One, make sure that um, your 4-H online enrollment, that you've looked over your projects, you know that the ones you want your children to be involved in and the ones that they're interested in are on their platform. Some, some counties say only enroll in the projects you're going to actually do. Um, my philosophy is, just based off of the experience with my own two kids, that when we enroll for 4-H in October, my kids may not have an interest in a particular project, but by February, they've grown, they've changed, they've matured, and their interests have changed. So if they kind of even say, you know, kind of remotely interested in it, I'm like, we're going to put it in your 4-H profile because I want them to be thinking about it. So that's my personal philosophy on selecting projects. Other counties are different, um, but that's my personal feelings towards it. Um, because our kids grow and change and, you know, we, we know that just from being parents, we know that our kiddos are, are always changing. So, um, so, you know, sign them up for the things that you think that they're interested in and just keep fueling that passion, keep feeding, feeding what interests them. Um, if you are interested in livestock, that is kind of a really important one right now. A uh, beef weigh-in was on Saturday. Um, so if you are interested in the beef project, that deadline has actually come and gone, unless it's bucket calf. So if you have a bucket calf, um, you are more than welcome to bring that animal in and get it tagged and have a bucket calf still. But the beef, the big beef projects, we're, we're um, pretty, pretty set on those already. Um, but if you have small animals, so we're talking meat goats, sheep, um, swine, what am I missing? Goats, meat goats, sheep, meat goats, swine. <laughs> We're missing one, I feel like. Um, bucket calves. If you need to get those animals tagged, the information will be coming out in the next week about how to do that. But it's going to be a email um, or a phone call to our extension office. And you're going to set up an appointment for us to um, either come to your farm if you have pigs. There's a really bad pig disease happening in Oklahoma and Texas right now. And so we're going to try to keep pigs at their own facilities just simply out of um, biosecurity risk. But all the other livestock can come to our office on the trailer and um, we will tag them there. So but you need an appointment to do that. Um, typically, that's been a come in one night and, and tag your animal event. We are going to spread it out because of COVID. We're going to spread it out over the entire month of April. You just have to call our office and make that appointment uh, so we are prepared when you come in. So that's um, kind of one of the big things other than making sure your 4-H enrollment is, is ready to go for 2021. Um, other than that, you know, livestock is kind of the big thing right now, um, trying to get that. But definitely be watching for our talking about series, uh, similar to what we're doing here right now, just a Q&A about different things. Um, we've got some great volunteers who have told us that, the, you know, have volunteered to give their time um, to answer questions for families. So I hope that you guys find those useful um, as you start your 4-H journey. So I'm gonna give you one last opportunity to ask a question um, and then we're gonna sign off for the night because I know some of you kiddos need to get to bed. Wiley's giving me the stink eye for saying he has to go to bed. <laughs> So any other questions? Is there, limit, is there a limit to how many projects the kids can do? Only as many as you are crazy enough to tackle. <laughs> so no, there is not a limit. Um, you know, I think there comes a point where you get spread too thin. So the learning is very linear versus deep. You know, you're not growing as much as you possibly could because you're, you're focused on so many different things. Um, but no, there is not a limit of you can only do five projects. Now inside the project, so like if you're talking about, um, I'll use the example swine project. If he's interested in doing the swine project, 
there is limitations on how many like animals you can bring to the fair. But as far as how many projects you can be involved in, there's not. But when those fair rules are posted in the next week, all of that information is in there. So you can bring two breeding animals and two market animals, or you can bring five photos and six food entries. So all of those specifics on how many of each project you can compete with is in the fair book. How many projects you want to learn about throughout the year, that's open to what mom and dad feel is, is good for the kid. Does that answer your question? Perfect. Um, one more. Are additional family members able to be added to the email distribution list? That's one of the glitches in 4-H online that we're still trying to get them to fix. Last I knew, it hasn't been yet. The challenge is even um, in families where it's a split family, the child is with mom part of the time and dad part of the time. It's not even letting us put a second email address in, one for mom and one for dad right now. Um, you can... I, we can add, we can try to figure out a way to get that onto a database. Um, if there's other individuals that need to be um, on that email distribution list, but I do encourage you um, to, to get on our Facebook page, our members and leaders page, um, or sign up as a 4-H volunteer and come help us out too. <laughs> That's another way to do it. So, um, but email me directly if you, if you want to, we can talk a little bit more about that, Terry, and, and figure out what that looks like. And, and hopefully 4-H Online will fix that soon, but it's one of the glitches they have yet to tackle for us. Other questions? All right, well, I don't see any. Um, guys, I greatly appreciate you coming tonight and I hope that you found this beneficial. I hope that um, it will kind of give give some light to your 4-H journey. But if at any time you have questions, I'm available. So email me, call me at the office, um, and I'll be more than happy to, to walk you through things and provide resources. Um, I, I want your kids to thrive and have the best opportunity and the best experience in 4-H that they can. It molded me and, and taught me so many things as a kid growing up. Um, and so I just want to provide the same opportunities for the kids. So always holler at me if you need anything. But with that, I am going to sign off and let you guys get to your evenings. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Bye, Wiley. Bye.